Hi everybody, this is Dr. Dan. I'm going to show you how we can use Project Libre so that you can plan your design project for BME 261L. Okay, another piece of software called Microsoft Project is the really useful, important, pretty ubiquitous piece of software for, for project management. Now, project Libre is a good open source and free version that has pretty much most of the same functionality as Microsoft Project. Whether you use Microsoft Project or Project Libre in the future, the experience you get from using Project Libre will translate very easily into using Microsoft Project. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to just use an example project to walk you through. Might as well do something you might be somewhat familiar with. And so I'm gonna work on scheduling uh, BME 245L this fall as if it's a project, okay? So you should be familiar with how BME 245L went, so hopefully it makes sense. Um, I'm not going to try to be like 100% complete or perfect on this. Mainly, I want to make sure I hit some of the different features of project. And there are multiple ways to do your planning. I'm just going to make sure I touch on most of the options that you're going to use. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing is we have this dialogue come up. We're going to create a new project. Um, if you've already created a project, you can obviously open a project. So I'll create the project. Uh, my project name, I'm going to call BME 245L Planning for fall of 2024. Uh, the project manager, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's kind of cosmetic, so I'll put my name in there. I'm gonna have us uncheck the forward scheduling, both for what I'm doing now and for what you guys are gonna do for your design project for BME 261L. Okay, forward schedule means that we're gonna plan based on a start date, and then you'll figure out how long it will take, right? And so that is usually what you'll be asked from an engineering company if you're a project manager, Somebody may ask you, hey, how long will it take to do this project? And so you'll have to do your planning, uh, figure out if we started working on this today, you know, how long would it take? And so your answer would be, you know, if I had five full-time equivalent employees, then this project will take whatever, nine months or something, right? And so then they can decide to start the project whenever they want, and they know that nine months in the future it will be finished. Okay, but in school, nobody's really asking us how long things are going to take, right? The semester have very inflexible end dates. So we want to do what's called backward scheduling, right? We're going to fix our end date and then every, we got to figure out when we have to do everything in order to meet that end date. Um, I would say there are some projects in the industry kind of like that, right? Especially if you have super hard deadlines. For instance, when I worked at NASA and we were working on space shuttle launches, right? The space shuttle flight launch date is, you know, whatever. And so we'd have to plan when we want to start our work in order to support that launch date, right? And so that that's when we would use backward scheduling. Okay, so we are using backward scheduling here. So I'm going to put the finish date as the date when grades are due. So that's going to be 12 18 2024. Now hit okay. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this window so we can see we got a task list here. And this will be our Gantt chart coming up. Um, and so just kind of go through in the file menu. Here's where you can open and save your files. Uh, over here is printing and exporting as PDF. This is what you'll use to turn in uh, the file. If you have multiple projects open, that's what this project thing is for. We can look at the information here and it gives us some more information on what we're doing. Um, a lot of this stuff, again, is very cosmetic, you know, in case you're working multiple projects in your company and you're trying to like categorize each one, right? Like the project type, I have mine as other, Yours might be product development, right? And you can select that, but like it doesn't actually change anything other than just labels it project development. Uh, the calendar we'll be talking about um, later in the future, so I'll leave that for later. Um, and then the baselines we're not going to worry about in this class. If you guys want to get into baselines, that's where you're um, doing some scheduling and you say, okay, we're locking down a baseline. And then if things changes, you kind of can see the baseline and see how things are affected by any changes that happen. Okay, so we're ready to get started. We can just start adding some tasks. And so a lot of what we're doing is going to be under the task menu, right? We're just thinking of all the things we need to do, right? So I'll go to the task menu. There's a lot of things here. Um, if you ever are on a different page, you want to get back to this Gantt chart, you just click that Gantt button and you'll get there. Okay, so I'm going to add a couple major milestones first as my task. So okay, my first major milestone is classes start, right? So I'm going to create a task called classes start. I'm going to give it a date of 8-26-2024. That's when classes will start. And it, says, it will give me this thing. It says, make the task start before the project start. 
And you'll just say okay on that because right now it just thinks the project is on 1218 only, right? And so we are saying, yes, we want this to happen before that. I also make a milestone that's class is ending, right? And that will happen on uh, 12 9, no, yeah, 12 9, 2024. Okay, and what I'm going to do is set the duration for these for zero days. And you can see what happened on the Gantt chart is it changed that to a diamond, which means it's a milestone. Right, and I go out here and you can see that milestone as well. So a milestone is something that's going to happen on that day no matter what we do. Okay, and so um, it's a little bit different than a deadline because a deadline is like a due date, right? Um, so a due date is like a paper you might have, right? And so your paper might do on a, be due on a Friday, but technically you could turn it in on Thursday and it would still be done in time, right? For a milestone, like I can be ready for classes to start, you know, a week earlier, but it doesn't matter. Classes are still only starting on August 26th in this case, okay? A milestone in your class might be things like the uh, requirement review, um, the design review, right? Those things are happening on certain days. The final presentation, right? There are no, there's no getting around that. Now that I have these two milestones, I'm going to put in all the tasks that I think need to be done for successful completion of BME 245L. And so I'm going to start by just major phases, right? Which is the same thing you should do. And then we'll add some details, right? So one of the first things I need before classes start is I need my, a planning phase, right? Where I do all my planning. So I'm going to go and click on this row and I hit the insert, which will insert one bolt above it. So I'll just type planning in here. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the uh, start time or the, uh, the number of days just yet. We're, we'll get to that. But you can see it, it left it on 1218 because that's when our project ends. So it's like, well, you can do that at the very end if there's, not, if there's not a reason to do it before then. Okay, in between classes start and end, I'm going to insert a couple phases. Uh, I'm going to, there's two major parts here. One is the cell culture part of 245L. The next one is the mechanical testing. And the other phase I was going to leave is uh, the exams, right? So uh, just to have a, a separate phase for thinking about when the exams will be. And then after the classes end, I'm going to add a phase that's basically finish grading, right? Finish everything up, submit grades. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about the duration and the times at this point. Uh, the one thing I do need to add, which I want to add to finish grading, is that, okay, we do have a due date for finish grading, right? So if I go and double click on finish grading, it brings up this dialog, right? And so it has my start and end date, but I'm gonna head over to advanced, right? And so right now it's saying, do this as late as possible, okay? And so then it will just do it when it can, right? So that, that's typically what you do. Usually you want it to procrastinate for you and figure out, okay, when do you need to start to get this done in time? But we wanna put a deadline in there. So my grades are due 1218, right? Okay, I see this X over here. That means something's up. So I double click. Okay, my deadline I typed 04, so 24. That's better. Okay, so I can scroll over and now I can see, okay, there's this yellow triangle, which is my deadline. I also see, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, Project Libre is a little bit frustrating because clearly I put the classes end on 12.9 before, but for some reason it felt the need to move it to 12.18. Okay, so I'm not sure why it chose to do that. Um, see, it says start no earlier than 12.9, which is when I put this milestone. I'm going to, I'm going to, like, this is how you can fix things, right, is I just say must start on 12.9. And I'll hit close, and that did move it to 12.9. I'll just tell you, I run into these silly things all the time, whether using Project Libre or Microsoft Project. Uh, and so then you just have to figure out how to fix it. Okay, and so I just fixed that right there. So the last thing I want to show you is that, okay, right now it thinks, hey, we don't need to finish any of these things until 1218. So I'm gonna schedule them all for right before they need to finish. And we'll just finish them all on that last day because all of them will take one day and they're gonna finish on that last day. But we know that's not how it's really gonna work. So one of the things you need to do is set what things have to happen before other things. So there's this column called predecessors, if we expand it out over here, okay? And so for instance, I don't want classes to start until after my planning has finished. Okay, so I'm gonna put in this column, 
or in this row, line two, I'm going to put one, which means row one is a predecessor, right? So I hit enter on that. And now I can go back to my Gantt chart and you can see it moved uh, this planning phase in front of class to start and it put that arrow there. Okay, it also changed it red, which means that's on the critical path. I'm not going to worry too much about what's critical and what's not critical, but that just means you can't move on until you get that task done. And then we have some other predecessors we can set. So instance, cell culture can't start until classes start. So I can put cell, for cell culture, I can put a predecessor is two, okay? And then mechanical testing isn't gonna start until cell culture starts. So I'm gonna put that as three. Uh, the exam, there is some overlap with mechanical testing. So I'm not gonna mess with that too much. I'll leave that as I don't need a predecessor. Uh, but my finished grading, I can't, I can't like, start grading until the exam's done. So I'm gonna put a uh, five there as my uh, predecessor. Okay, and now if I go and look at my Gantt chart, now you can see it's got some things uh, scheduled out over here. And I'm not sure why it thought I had to finish grading before uh, classes end, but that's how it did, so I'm not gonna mess with it at this point. Uh, so this is the general way that you're gonna set up like the order in which your tasks are gonna proceed, okay? So I've shown you the very basic uh, to get started, and I'll stop this video here. In the next video, we'll go into more detail about how to organize your project.